Hi Middle Schoolers, we are back for a new semester of EDGE, this semester focusing on the sacraments. So we are going to spend a lot of time on the seven sacraments. So as you can see, we're kind of mi mixing up our background, um, which is why we'll be uh, likely in church uh, most weeks for our videos. So first, before we get into the sacraments, I want you to imagine someone uh, you know or someone you've maybe seen in, in media and pop culture who has gone a tremendous physical transformation. Maybe um, an athlete um, plays football, basketball, wrestles, um, maybe an Olympian, maybe um, an Olympic runner, um, a weightlifter, someone you know who's gone an amazing physical transformation. And there are a lot of things that you can, you can look at physically and see that a transformation has taken place, that that person maybe has lost weight. Um, or their weight has been redistributed, that they've gained a muscle, that they are faster, that they are more flexible, that they um, are able to change movements very quickly, that they can maybe lift a lot, um, they have a particular endurance. And so there are different physical things we can see that tell us a transformation has taken place. But even beyond the things that we can see, there are things that we can't necessarily see easily that, that are transformed, that speak to the reality that, that this person has changed. So even within their body, things will have changed that will be then shown on, on the physical, physical appearance of their body. Um, we can talk about also not only within the body, but within the mind, transformation has taken place. That they have um, grown stronger in their willpower that they have grown stronger in their motivation. They have grown in their ability to endure, their ability to be um, uncomfortable for the sake of transformation. And this, of course, is an allegory for our life of faith, for the sacramental life. Then in a similar way, when we receive sacraments, there's something invisible happening inside of us that um, that we know through through visible signs, visible, visible actions. Something invisible inside of us that is giving us strength and endurance in our spiritual lives. The sacraments are visible signs of an invisible reality. So for example, when we talk about the sacrament of baptism, the visible sign that we see holy water being um, poured over um, likely an infant's head reveals something deeper happening spiritually. This visible sign of the water and of the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, reveal a spiritual reality, an invisible spiritual reality, that original sin in that individual is washed away, that they become an adopted son or daughter of God the Father, and that they are given the grace um, giving sanctifying grace, divine life, to, to begin anew in Christ. There are seven sacraments in our Catholic Church. There um, are what we call three sacraments of initiation. These are the sacraments that bring us into uh, the life of God, the life of the Church. These three sacraments are baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist. You have likely experienced two of these three. Baptism, which you probably don't remember, and Holy Eucharist, which you probably do remember, at least your first Holy Communion, and hopefully you've received that sacrament several other times, ideally weekly. And then confirmation, that completion of the graces of baptism, which you will hopefully receive in a few years. And then from there, we have the sacraments of healing. There are two sacraments of healing, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, which you are also likely very familiar with, having likely received reconciliation as a second grader, and hopefully having received reconciliation regularly since then, at least yearly, um, hopefully more often, ideally at least monthly. And then also the Sacrament of Anointing of the Sick that provides healing uh, to both the body and soul um, in a unique way. And then finally, the two sacraments what we call sacraments at the service of communion. So these uh, are sacraments that equip one to live a unique vocation in life. The first being the sacrament of holy orders, 
in which a man is ordained to the diaconate, um, becoming a deacon, is ordained to the priesthood, or is ordained a bishop. And then uh, lastly, the sacrament of holy matrimony, in which a, uh, a man and a woman unite themselves fully to one another, um, unite themselves fully to God um, at the service of, of, of marriage, of, of having a family for the sake of the kingdom of God. All of these sacraments, even though a lot of them seem very different from one another, all reveal to us the great love and mystery of God. Now sometimes it might be fun to imagine what it would be like to have a superpower. And this is probably a question you've been asked at some point in your life. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Maybe being invisible, maybe flying, maybe being able to pause time. But through our sacramental life, we actually do have access to super spiritual powers through the sacraments, supernatural graces. I already mentioned sanctifying grace, which is given to us in baptism. Sanctifying grace that enables us um, to, to have God's divine life within us. But then each of the sacraments are filled with specific graces or powers that come forth from Jesus Christ. Again, these are not earthly powers, they're not skills or abilities that we practice, but these are supernatural graces given to us by God. So by the working of the Holy Spirit, the sacraments give us graces to overcome obstacles, give us graces to battle evil, to continually build up and sustain the members. Um, they give us the grace give us the graces to, as members of the church, be continually sustained. And additionally, the sacraments convey the grace they signify. The sacraments do as they are intended to do, because at, um, in any of the sacraments, it is Jesus himself who is at work. So saying the sacrament of reconciliation, yes, it's coming, um, coming face to face or face to screen to face uh, with a priest to confess your sins, but it's really Jesus Christ who is at work in that sacrament. Jesus Christ who is forgiving your sins through the priest. So each sacrament has its specific graces. Each sacrament um, confers the grace, grace it, that it signifies through the power of Jesus Christ. Sacraments make us holy. They give us specific grace, specific strength to grow in our relationship with Jesus and to become more like Christ. They serve to build up the body of Christ and to nourish our faith. And additionally, sacraments are necessary for salvation. The sacraments are one of the greatest things that the church gives us. Each of the sacraments is, is special, is important. And while we might not receive every sacrament, we probably won't. Um, very rarely would someone receive all seven sacraments. They are all necessary to the life of the church. So all sacraments are necessary. Um, the sacraments are necessary for salvation, especially the sacraments of initiation, um, which bring us again into the life, life of God. They're the path that Christ has paved for us to help lead us to holy, holiness, help lead us to heaven with great ease. We can kind of picture, um, picture a paved road, a long paved road leading to this glorious destination of heaven. The sacraments essentially provide this paved road for us to get to heaven. This isn't to say that someone, um, someone who is not a member of the church, someone who is not receiving the sacraments cannot get to heaven. God may work in, in ways outside of our knowledge, but God gives us a clear, ready path for holiness, a clear, ready path for heaven. In addition to the sacraments, the church has what are called sacramentals. They are different from, different from sacraments. And while the word sacramental might be new to you, you're probably very familiar with a lot of sacramentals. So things such as uh, holy water, a rosary, a crucifix, uh, a scapular, prayer cards, these are holy signs in our daily life that help us open our hearts and open our minds to receive the graces of the sacraments fully. They're a beautiful gift to us and something that we should use regularly and take advantage of. So lastly, 
The sacraments are transformational. When we encounter Christ in the sacraments, we're changed. We are transformed. We might not be able to visibly see uh, the grace of a sacrament. We might not maybe feel changed, but real change is happening in our lives. God is at work. Christ is moving in our lives. The Holy Spirit is doing amazing things. So as we journey through this, this semester focusing on the sacraments, I encourage you to be open to the sacraments, to be open to the graces, um, graces given in the sacraments, and the ways that God desires to transform your life, lives.